welcome to PA Harness Week, racing's fastest paced half hour, bringing you the sport of harness racing from the great state of Pennsylvania. I'm Heather Vitale, along with my co-host, Jess Otten, and it is our final show of the season, and we're going out with a bang. Although I am so sad it is our last show of the season, I'm really excited for this next half hour because, boy, Heather, we saved the best for last. Definitely. We've got so much ahead, so let's check out the headlines. On today's show, we have a gate-to-wire coverage of Sun State Saturday from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. The James Lynch for three-year-old lady pacers, the Max Hemp for three-year-old male pacers, and on the trotting side, we have the Earl Beal Jr. for three-year-old male trotters, plus a track record to show you in the Sebastian K Invitational. And that's just the tip of the iceberg for what we've got from that amazing day. Plus, We'll be bringing you more exciting races from Harris, Philadelphia. And get ready, it's all next on PA Harness Week. Okay, so we have not one, not two, but six races of the week from the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono from Sun Stake Saturday. And we're gonna kick it off with the $250,000 James Lynch Memorial. So in here, let's check out number nine. It's Hot Mess Express. She's the favorite. She's undefeated in seven starts this year. And also number five is Grace Hill coming off an impressive win in the Shady Daisy and Pennsylvania Sire Stakes competition. Take it away announcer, Jim Bavilia. Reasonable numbers up front. Firestart Hanover now will have to deal with Blue Diamond Eyes. Yannick Jingra goes after it first over, and Blue Diamond Eyes just three parts of a length back. Grace Hill getting a good trip in the pocket. Hot Mess Express is second over, about two off the cover, two and a half off the pace. Inside the beach is calling saving ground. Outside Continua Lou lagging a bit sixth, followed there by its Papalotl, and then further back uh, to Chase Lounge. Three quarters, 122 even, 27 even third panel. Firestart Hanover is still there. Blue Diamond Eyes striving on the outside. Meanwhile, Grace Hill engaged in the pocket. Now into fourth, there is uh, the beach is calling Hot Mess Express trying to come up late. Top of the stretch. Now Grace Hill out of the pocket, up the passing lane, coming after Firestart Hanover. Grace Hill taking over the lead. Firestart Hanover cannot hold her back. Grace Hill, amazing Grace here this afternoon. Five of these pacing fillies had interest in leaving, but it was Grace Hill who was the quickest off the gate. She had the lead through a 26 and two opening quarter. Firestart Hanover worked her way to the front with one lap to go. Blue Diamond Eyes started that outer flow heading up the backside, giving the favorite hot mess except breast a second over trip. Firestart Hanover turned away Blue Diamond Eyes around the last turn. Grace Hill was loaded in the pocket and she paced strongly through the wire, equaling her lifetime mark of 149. Driven to victory by Todd McCarthy. It was a nifty Norman trained exact. A Firestart Hanover finished second and up for third was the Beaches Calling. And Heather, you had a chance to catch up with the happy Nifty Norman. Nifty, amazing Amazing, you got a nifty Norman exacta. How you feeling? Good, great. Yeah, that was very good, wasn't it? Tell me about each one of the mares, okay? We're gonna start with Grace Hill, the winner, but because they're both really spectacular fillies. Yeah, they're, they're a lovely pair. Uh, Grace is probably the more relaxed. She's pretty laid back and pretty easy to be around. Uh, Firestart can be a, a bit of a firecracker. She's uh, she can put the boot in occasionally, and uh, she can be a bit of a handful. But she she's lovely too, really. They're really uh, they're nice pair to have. Let's roll right into the $300,000 Max Hemp Memorial for the best of three-year-old pacers on the entire planet. And here, number four, it's Perfect Sting, last year's two-year-old undefeated champ. This year, he's still a major force in all the big races. And number one is Lawless Shadow, who took home the Meadowlands Pace Trophy just the last month. But then there's number six, Hella Baloo, who crossed the wire first this year in the prestigious Adios. Lawless Shadow leads by a length and three quarters. Perfect Sting still lagging just a bit in that loose pocket spot. Outside Southwind Gendry, a first over grind for Jingra, still four to make up. Boxed in fourth, Hella Blue, second over Rocky Road, Hanover not getting much help from the cover. Inside Chase H, Hanover further back to I'll drink to that in a buck of bed, Hanover. Still no challenge on the outside of Lawless Shadow. Perfect Sting inches closer, three quarters, 121 and two, 27 and two, third panel. Lawless Shadow still there by two. Perfect Sting. 
Sting has not yet started advancing. Inside looking for room third there is Hellabaloo as Rocky Road Hanover drops back. Top of the stretch now, Perfect Sting pulls and comes at Lawless Shadow. It's still Lawless Shadow, Perfect Sting a length back. Perfect Sting a half length back. Lawless Shadow desperate to hold on. Perfect Sting all out, it's tight, it's Lawless Shadow. What a thrilling opening quarter in this event. Three of them left the gate hard. That included Lawless Shadow, Perfect Sting, and Hella Blue. As things settled around the first turn, it was Lawless Shadow and Mark McDonald to take command, and they paid the price for it with a hot 25 and 2 first quarter. They were able to rate the mile from there. Southwind Gentry started the outer flow up the backside, but got no impression on the leader. Perfect Sting popped the pocket, and it was a slugfest all the way to the wire between Perfect Sting and Lawless Shadow. It was close at the wire in one. 48 and 2, but it was Lawless Shadow who came out a nose ahead of Perfect Sting who finished second, and Hella Baloo was third. Reunited with Mark McDonald, the son of Shadow Play, is trained by Dr. Ian Moore. There were lots of smiles in that winner's circle. Let's see what Doc had to say about his cold performance. Doc, he performed like a horse that was paying 10 cents on the dollar, not a horse that paid 14.80. How impressed are you with today's performance? Well, I never noticed the odds for a starter. I usually don't look at that till after the fact. Um, We've been pleased with him right from the get-go here. I just had tough luck in Ontario. There's some, some good horses there, and we just had some bad luck uh, last week for sure. So uh, change of scenery did him some good. One of the things about this horse is that you trained his daddy, Shadow Play. So how much more special is that? Well, it's very special, and especially he went the exact same time as Shadow Play did in 2008 in the, in the Adios, which they had a Pocono that year because that's when they were doing the construction at the Meadow. At the meadow. So uh, the only year they had it here, he set a world record 48-2. and two. It's not a world record today, but it's pretty impressive, and we're very pleased. Let's take a quick break, but still to come, so much more exciting action from Sun Stakes Saturday, including the Earl Beal Jr. for three-year-old Colt Trotters and the Delmonica Hanover for three-year-old Philly Trotters, plus a stakes record performance from Trotting Royalty in the Sebastian K Invitational. We'll be right back. Atlanta, one to two betting favorite, Jing Rock content in the pocket. Get back to the feeling of Mohegan Sun Pocono. PA Harness Week, and I'm not making this any kind of fancy welcome back because we have so much more action to get to from the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono from Sun Stakes Saturday. Right now, we're going to check out the $300,000 Earl Beal Jr. Memorial for those fabulous three-year-old Colt and Gelding Trotters. And in here, the main thing to point out is that trainer Ake Svonsted has three horses in this race. Number one, Captain Corey. The 1A, Delayed Hanover. And the six, Johan Palima. With Obviously, Captain Corey being the one to watch since he is your 2021 Hamiltonian champion. Three quarters, 123 and four, 28 and one, a bit faster on the back, but middle portion not too bad. Captain Corey by a long neck over, delayed Hanover in the pocket. Yolan Palima just a link back, second over into contention now. Son of a mystery, top of the stretch. Captain Corey looking to separate now. Svonstedt starts to ask the lead is two. Yolan Palima comes out of the pocket. It's Captain Corey. Yolan Palima won't get there. Ride, Captain Ride, Captain Corey. That Hamiltonian race didn't take much out of Captain Corey as he put up another great performance. I just love watching this Colt race and the way his beautiful stride covers the ground. Take all comers had a burst of speed off the gate. Johan Palima also had interest in the early lead. So Aki Svan said let things settle a bit up top before pointing Captain Corey to the front right where he likes it and he was able to set the scene from there. His stable mate delayed Hanover, contested him around the far turn but went off stride and it was all Captain Corey on the front end to score in 151. Johan Palima was second and finishing third was take all comers. Trained and driven to victory by Aki Svan said this made Captain Corey's Harness Racing's newest millionaire. And Heather, you had to get a chance to get some reaction from Aki Svan said with a guest appearance. So let's check it out. Did the race pan out the way you thought? Yes, it did. And Juan Palima, he can leave very fast, and but he want to race on the helmet. So then I just went to the front. So. And then it was... Uh, 
no race before we come into the stretch and we, he pick up the speed really, really fast. <laughs> yeah, you know, after you win the Hamiltonian, right, then you go into another big race. Do you train the horse any differently? How do you prepare? No, he, yesterday in the very light training, mostly jogging. So it's so close between the races, so he don't need so much training. I love it, and, and what's not to love? He's gorgeous, look at him. He's got this amazing gait. Yes, you, look at how cute you are. Mwah. Um, you know, tell me about his personality. He just seems so chill and laid back. Yes, he is a smart horse and always uh, nice and friendly, easy to handle, but I think they must be smart to be a good one. We're high stepping it into more trotting action, this time for our sophomore ladies. It's the $250,000 Delmonica Hanover. So check out number two. You ought to dream. It's the better's choice. Having the most money won this year in this group thanks to some big efforts. Also getting respect at the windows is the entry of 1 and 1A, Flawless Country and Wet My Whistle. Both starting for trainer Aki Sponstead. Fractions are crisp up front. You ought to dream leading the way. Good spot in the pocket for Maserati and on the outside now Darlene Hanover is with two and a half keeps it rolling out there for Todd McCarthy in the pocket is flawless country big move now from May Carp three wide for Dexter Dunn right up behind the cover went right past frankly my dear pub crawl is seventh then wet my whistle sweeping rainbow out of it the lead down to a half length now for you auto dream three quarters 123 and four 28 and four on the back you auto dream dealing with Darlene Hanover who now pulls up even maybe takes a slight lead loose pocket still there for Maserati second over comes May Carp about two and a half away. Top of the stretch, it's Darlene Hanover taking over now from Uado Dream, who's trying to fight back, but Darlene Hanover wearing her down. Maserati pushed that gate away, and Tietrich put her right on the engine heading into that first turn. The favorite Uato Dream moved from fourth to take a shot at the leader during a 26 and three opening quarter, and she cleared heading into the far turn. Darlene Hanover started the first over grind at the half, and she steadily moved forward on the outside. Uato Dream and Darlene Hanover trotted evenly around the last turn before Darlene Hanover pulled away to win, lowering her lifetime best to 151 and four. Flawless Country came on late to the scene to finish second, and you auto dream was third. The daughter of Chapter 7 is trained by Brett Biddle, and this is the third time Todd McCarthy had a chance to sit behind this filly. Let's see what he had to say about her performance. Todd, if somebody would have said, okay, Darlene Hanover is going to win this race first over, I would have been like, no, uh-uh. But tell me, is this how you thought it was going to pan out? I didn't quite know. I was kind of hoping maybe I was going to get a nice second over trip, but then um, the way the race panned out and there was a couple moves there, I figured that we'd be you know slowing down a little from the half. So it was a it was a good time to pull her, and, and she's raced like that before. She's you know she's got a lot of heart that filly, and she certainly showed it today. She looked so good. Like when you pulled her first up, gosh, just tell me how it felt. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when she started trotting up there and we hadn't spent a penny early, so I knew we were going to have a bit of gas left in the tank and uh, she certainly finished off like that. So, um, you know, full credit to Brett. He had a spot on today and uh, I just had to steer around. The trotting action does not stop as we check out the $75,000 Sebastian K Invitational for Open Trotters. Now, of course, this is named for the overall trotting track record holder, Sebastian K, here at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. All right, the favorite's number five, Atlanta. You know, she's a world champion, a winner of over $2.8 million, a former Hamiltonian winner. She's all that and the bag of chips. Let's see her in action in the Sebastian K. Still Lindy the great as nobody up and is outside three quarters 123 and 1 27 and 4 on the back it's been lindy the great most of the way atlanta still lurking in the pocket outside ready for money now within three inside opens up for wind doves cry as atlanta pulls top of the stretch lindy the great on top atlanta coming out after him now and atlanta is in gear inside wind doves cry but there's no stopping atlanta welcome to the superstar atlanta lindy the great and andy miller left aggressively off the gate to capture that lead going into the first turn. Atlanta and Jingress had no problem taking that pocket seat behind Lindy the Great as he cut the mile. Atlanta and Yannick Jingra popped the pocket coming out of the last turn and she trotted home in 26 and 4, stopping the clock in 150 and 1, which was a new track record for those older trotting mares. She is conditioned by the sport's leading trainer, Ron Burke. When Doves Cry had trot up the passing lane to finish second and Lindy the Great was third. Atlanta is always so much fun to walk on the racetrack and see her do her thing. Let's see what Yannick had to say about her track record performance. Yannick, tell me about how the race set up because honestly, I thought you were going to quarter pole move there. 
No, no, actually, that's a, kind of the way I wanted it. Uh, man, I know Lindy the Great's a nice horse, and, uh, you know, he, he's going to get me where I need to go. And uh, two old trips for, for this mirror, uh, we'll take him when we can get him. Let's just talk about Atlanta overall. Oh, my gosh, who doesn't love Atlanta? Tell me about how it is to drive her. Uh, she's special, no doubt about it. She drives two-finger. You know, you can leave as fast as you want to go if you want. You can take her back. It doesn't matter to her. And uh, uh, she's been a pleasure, that's for sure. Now we're going to check out one more big race from Sunstake Saturday at the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono. And this one is the $75,000 Always Be Mickey Invitational for open pacers, of course, named for the co-holder of the pacing track record there at Pocono. So in here, we've got the one to five favorite. It's number two, Nicholas Beach, who has had six wins this year, including the Commodore Barry at Harris, Philadelphia. And number eight, Allie Wag Hanover is coming into this off a super win in the Sam McKee Memorial at the Meadowlands. Three quarters reached in 120 and 326 even on the back stretch. Laid down there by Alleywag Hanover. Nicholas Beach tightening up in the pocket. Outside Nandolo drops back and so a flame Hanover has been saving ground all the way. He's four back third. Top of the stretch. Alleywag Hanover dealing now with Nicholas Beach. Alleywag Hanover finding more energy here. Nicholas Beach will not get past Todd McCarthy again. Alleywag Hanover. We usually see Alleywag Hanover come from off the pace, but the tactics were a bit different in here. McCarthy was aggressive from post eight and they had the lead heading into that first turn. The favorite Nicholas Beach had no problem taking that pocket seat through a 25 and three opening panel. He got a bit of a second quarter breather and then forced the outer flow to develop. It was Nandolo who put the pressure on up the backside through a 26 flat third quarter. And when the passing lane came, Nicholas Beach didn't have enough to get to Alleywag Hanover finishing second and up for third was Ruthless Hanover trained by Brett Pelling. The son of Captain Treacherous stopped the clock in 147 and 2 and that ties a world record for those age pacing geldings. This victory capped off a four win afternoon for Todd McCarthy. Here he is catching up with Heather. Todd, what a day. How fantastic. Thanks Heather. No, it's been a terrific day and uh, you know I'm just very lucky to drive for some of these terrific trainers and get to sit behind these horses and you know the, the lovely owners that are happy to have me down. You know Alleywag, obviously a big price but on top of that I didn't even see where he cuts a mile. No, that's the first time I've cut the mile with him and, uh, you know, he's been so good at the Meadowlands on a mile track there and he's, he's kind of been good like that with, with a trip though. So uh, when I ended up on front there today and we were getting along pretty good and uh, worked out good to stay there. At the three quarters, I was just hoping we were going to be good enough to hang on and uh, when I asked him, he, he showed his class and drew away. All right, now it is time to take another break, but guess what? When we come back, we're going to have exciting racing from Paris, Philadelphia. And Jess has her trivia question for you. We'll be back in a flash. And between my toes on the inside, joined out by all you need is faith, their noses apart. It's Mac Lobel, and he's pouring it on. It's Niatros by four, and he's going away. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame, a place where heroes come to life. Preserving harness racing's treasured past while promoting its exciting future. And now get ready to harness your excitement with the thrill of Harness Racing's 3D Simulator. The Harness Racing Museum and Hall of Fame now offering free admission. Bigger, better, bolder than ever. Welcome back to PA Harness Week and I hope you got rested up during that break because now we're heading to Harris, Philadelphia for their race of the week. Okay, let's check out the feature race from the Sunday, August 22nd card featuring top pacers in the sport going for a purse of $22,500. And you're going to want to check out number five, Lion Sentinel, the lone mare in the race, the richest in the race with $1.5 million, the fastest in the race, and also the favorite in the race. Also, we're going to see number three, Sam Between My Toes, getting some attention in here. He just scored a 148 and four mile a couple starts back. Take it away, announcer Mike Bozich. Sand between my toes, narrowly. All you need is faith is second. Lion Steel now fans out three wide on the cards towards the inside. Lion Sentinel now moves out four wide. They straighten away for the stretch drive. Sand between my toes, kicks a length clear. All you need is faith up the inside on the cards on the far outside. Lion Sentinel is picking him up, laying him down. Sand between my toes, here is Lion Sentinel out wide. She beat the boys, Lion Sentinel. There was plenty of inside speed in this featured race on Sunday 
afternoon at Harris Philadelphia. That included on the cards, Sand Between My Toes and Lion Steel. After being parked through a 26-2 opening quarter, Sand Between My Toes secured the lead, and it was a rated pace from there. All You Need Is Faith came first over past the half, and Lion Steel picked up that cover. The lone mare in the field was watching this pace from fifth. Dietrich pulled her four wide around the last turn. As Mike Bozich said, she was picking them up and laying them down to score in 150 flat. Hall of Famer Tim Dietrich teamed up with Jim King Jr., making this her fourth consecutive win in a row. On the cards was second and finishing third was Sam Between Matos. Okay, so this isn't just any regular OMG. This is our final OMG of the season. So what we're going to check out is from the August 22nd card at Harris Philadelphia. And I don't want to give too much away, but let me just say, when these ladies cross the wire, take shelter, because it's bombs away. Outside, Camp Saison throws the inside. Dragon Sparks, Barack and Kay. Shed's cover moves out three wide as they straighten away for the stretch drive. Camp Saison, Dragon Sparks digs in. Off cover, here comes Barack and Kay at huge odds. 45 to 1. Barack and Kay takes the lead. Dragon Sparks, Camp Saison on the far outside. Three way split is kicking in now, but is it too late? It is. Barack and Kay gets it done at 45 to 1. Double off the wall. Use that inside advantage to protect position going into that first turn before letting Dragon Sparks take the lead. There wasn't much movement in that second panel. Capsaicin pulled from third to challenge the leader, giving more Rock and Kay a second over trip. And she paced strongly past the dueling leaders with Pat Berry in the bike, scoring in 153. She is trained by Gilbert Garcia Owen. Finishing second was three way split. And rounding out those trifecta tickets was Capsaicin. And OMG, if you wagered on this Philly, she was 45 to 1 and paid over $92 to win. So we hope you guys had it. We hate to use the phrase rack your brain. It seems a little bit harsh, so we call it trivia time. <laughs> All right, Jess, what do you have for us? As mentioned earlier on the show, Brett Pelling trains Allie Wag Hanover, who won that Always Be Mickey Invitational on Sunstake Saturday. And Allie Wag Hanover is really making a name for himself in the older ranks for older pacers. Brett Pelling has trained many great horses over the last several years, including Rock and Roll Hanover, who was named Horse of the Year at one point. So. My question for you guys is, what year was Rock and Roll Hanover named Horse of the Year? And I'll give you guys a hint. It was the year YouTube debuted and Carrie Underwood won American Idol. I love the hints. Okay, you guys think about that because we're heading into another break. When we come back, of course, we will have the answer. Plus, we have got a groovy 1970s blast from the past. You won't want to miss. Don't you dare touch that remote. They're at the mile mark. It's Delmonica Hanover with that lead. Get back to the feeling of Mohegan Sun Pocono. Welcome back to PA Harness Week. I'm Heather. This is Jess, and Jess has an answer for you. So Brett Pelling trained Rock and Roll Hanover, and he was once named Horse of the Year, so my question for you guys this week was, what year was it? Well, it was 2005. He was a three-year-old. He won 12 of 18 starts that year, and a few of his major stake wins included the Breeders' Crown, the North America Cup, and the Meadowlands Pace. We saw the Delmonic Hanover race earlier in the show from Sunstake Saturday. Now we're going to check out that phenomenal trotting filly herself in action. Okay, so we want you to put on your bell bottoms because we have a groovy and a totally far out man. 1974 blast from the past. It's the $200,000 international trot from Roosevelt Raceway. 
It's Delmonica Hanover and Dosan of Italy on the outside. Through the stretch to the finish, Delmonica Hanover under a drive with that lead. On the outside, it's Dosan. Delmonica Hanover on the inside is going to win the Roosevelt International Trot. This was Delmonica Hanover's second consecutive international trot victory. She was such a tremendous trotter, and that performance right there showed her grit. One thing you definitely do not want to miss, it's coming up Friday, September 10th at Harris, Philadelphia, the 15-year celebration. There's a special post time of 6.30 p.m., all right? That means it's racing under the lights. It is a party that's going to be happening. So much fun. There's going to be live entertainment. There's going to be food and drink specials. You're not going to want to miss this again. Friday, September 10th, Harris, Philadelphia. Now, of course, that's a few weeks away, but right now we also want to tell you about the actual live racing schedules, the regular ones happening at the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono and Harris, Philadelphia. So let's go. At the Downs of Mohegan Sun Pocono, we've got live racing Saturday, Monday, and Tuesday. The post time is 12.30 p.m. Sunday post time, 5 p.m. Harris, Philadelphia. The live racing schedule is Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Post time, 12.25 p.m. And then Sunday post time is 12.40 p.m. As always, we want to make sure you guys know where to place your wagers online if you can't be with us on site. So here's the information for that. For Harris, Philadelphia, the website is pabets.tvg.com. For the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono, the website is ibetmohegan.com. And of course, we offer free program pages. Pages. Those can be found at phha.org right at the top of the homepage. You can't miss it. Now we want to thank everyone this year for entering our special exclusive PA Harness Week sunglass contest. Thank you guys. A lot of support out there. And if you have won and you've been contacted, please go on our social media pages and send us a direct message so that we can send you the sunglasses. Yeah, you guys don't want to miss out on that. So we want to make sure you guys still stay connected with us even though our season is ending. You can find us on Facebook and on Twitter. You can find us at Facebook at Harness Week and you can find us on Twitter at PA Harness Week. Plus if you want to go back and rewatch any of our shows they can find us on YouTube as well at PA Harness Week. And since it is our final show of the season we definitely want to give some thank yous out of course to everyone at the Pennsylvania Harness Horsemen's Association. The members, the directors, our president Sam Beagle and our marketing director Rachel Alzuski. Thank you guys so much. And a big thank you as well to the TV control rooms at Harris Philadelphia and the Downs at Mohegan Sun Pocono as well as our track announcers Jim Bavilia and Mike Bozich. And especially to you guys, the fans. Oh my gosh, I was not going to cry. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you so much. It's been such a great season. And thank you, Jess. I love you. I love you. <laughs> we'll see you next year.